Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Gold slumps and silver edges up. Let's explore. And this is one of those strange anomalies. Usually when gold drops, silver tends to drop even more. But in a rare form, silver is slightly up. In fact, just one nickel as of the recording of this video. And gold is down uh, fairly substantially in terms of dollars, but uh, it hasn't broken the 1% mark. Gold is still holding fairly strong considering the stronger dollar and improved risk appetite on this article from CNBC. Gold prices fell 1% on Wednesday, hurt by a stronger dollar, while optimism around a potential COVID-19 vaccine raised hopes for a quick economic rebound, driving investors towards riskier assets. Now, is that uh, hopeful? Th is that just it as a hopeful thinking? Because, uh, you know, there are levels, parts of the economy that have done well and improved. The GDP numbers we talked about previously is one example and unemployment numbers falling dramatically. There's still sectors of the economy that are still hurting and there's long-term effects that we haven't dealt with for, for quite a while, you know, and that's just it. There, our economy is sick and really the world economy is sick and we know why that's happening. Uh, spot gold was down as the numbers here show. We actually looked at those numbers there just uh, previously. Gold's got two things working against it, strong equities and a strong dollar at this point. It's hard for gold to continue to rally given those two markets being up higher, said uh, Rob uh, Habercorn, senior market strategist at RJO Futures. The flight to safety in the precious metals that we had last week after the U.S. elections has gone away from the lack of coronavirus vaccine news. Denting gold's appeal, the dollar index rose 0.4% to a near one-week high, making gold more expensive for holders of other currencies. Risk sentiment among investors gained as prospects of an effective COVID-19 vaccine overshadowed worries over surging infections. But the breakthrough highlighted the logistical challenges of distributing Hundreds of millions of doses once it becomes available. Given the reaction we've seen to vaccine news in recent days, the immediate downside risk for gold have undoubtedly increased. Oanda analyst Craig Earlman said in a note, the key area maintains between 1850 and 1860 and is looking very vulnerable in the near term. However, the longer term prospects for gold are bullish. The road to recovery will take time and require more central bank and government support. Federal Reserve policymakers on Tuesday highlighted the need for more targeted fiscal support from the government. Well, of course they want that. It's what they do. They want support from the government so they can print, print, print. Do you know what? You can't do that with gold and silver. Gold, which has risen more than 22% so far this year, tends to benefit from widespread stimulus measures from central banks because it is widely viewed as a hedge against inflation and currency debasement. I will also argue it's a hedge against deflation as well in any kind of economic instability. Silver slipped 1.4%, but it rose here in late trading here. And we can see here by these numbers, and we're going to prospect and some of the reasons why that's the case. Um, Let's actually take a look at the gold to silver ratio before we begin there. It's 76.85 right now. And um, so this, this makes us wonder, what is this strange anomaly? Now, we're going we're gonna to pretty much pass this off as an anomaly right now. The only metal to be in the green is silver right now. And why is this important or could be uh, a sort of a foreshadowing of what's to come? And that is that if the economy improves and we see um, a lot of um, um, manufacturing pickup, a lot of industrial activity, a lot of biomedical activity, more solar panels being printed, we may see an increased demand for silver. 
if we see an increased demand for silver and good economic conditions, well, we could certainly see as a potential gold go down and silver go up, just like what you are seeing here. And that is something to watch out for. It's something that I've talked about briefly in prior videos, but I'm very careful and cautious about that scenario occurring because uh, silver, though it is a precious metal and though it is rarer than base metals, it is essentially abundant. Um, and, and that is why you have to approach these things with caution because silver is seen as a commodity. So in other words, we may see silver rise as a commodity and less so as, um, as, a, as a monetary metal. However, as is always the case, what do people do when the prices go up? They buy. That's right. Demand for silver will probably increase if the prices do creep up. And so therefore, this idea that gold is falling and silver is rising is something to keep pay attention to. But again, I'm not saying this is what's happening right now with this price movement, with this particular point in time. But if we see more of this occur where gold continues to slump a bit and silver edges up, well, there may be something to this theory that demand for silver is increasing because economic activity is increasing. And that is something that we must keep in the back of our mind. And really, that is one way we can see the gold to silver ratio narrow under good news. But I tell you what, there's a lot going on in the world and there's a lot of sickness in the economy around the world that can only be fixed if we get our currency situation in order. They are working on it now, but what is going to be the cornerstone of a new reset of any kind of currencies out there? Digital. That's right. Digital currency. And more than likely the security of which will be some sort of, of open ledger or, or closed ledger, one or the other, or blockchain type of system that cryptocurrencies use. Fedcoin is one example of that that has been talked about. And of course, they've been openly talking about it with other nations around the world and revaluing debt with the International Monetary Fund. We'll see how it all plays out. But make no mistake, silver and gold are what they are. They continue will, to uh, maintain a sense of value compared to currencies out there and act as an insurance policy against uh, that which we discussed earlier, economic insecurity. That's what they're there for, and they'll continue to provide that element. However, there are commodity-type aspects and attributes to both gold and silver, especially platinum and palladium, but gold and silver are commodities as well as money. Now, silver is obviously much more of a commodity than gold is. Gold is treasured. Gold is, is held by the central banks around the world, and it will continue to be the case. But we could possibly see the gold to silver ratio narrow uh, based off the scenario I play, played out and talked about earlier. So it'll be very interesting to see how that all works out in the end. So here we have this anomaly, and this could be something we see more of in the future for the reasons I stated. We'll find out. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video. And I'd like to encourage you to please hit that bell notification button. That way you're notified, for the most part, if a new video arises. The videos as of late have not been discovered by the algorithm, so to speak. So it's up to you as viewers if you're interested to get the daily news and, and uh, take and also various other types of videos that I do post. It's not just these type of videos. I posted a video earlier about multiple different uh, areas in terms of precious metals. Um, so I encourage you to check back through a few days for the videos you may have missed. Um, so a multitude of gratitude to you all and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. One other note about silver I think is worth noting that even if this does continue to pattern or trend in the direction of silver rising a bit while gold goes down, or we don't see as much movement in the uh, prices for uh, gold and silver, and that ratio narrows, however it does happen, understand 
a lot of things can be reversed. The trend line could go the other direction. Um, you know, there's a lot of discovery out there. There's a lot of um, mining and, and production that occurs. And uh, so we have to keep in mind the volatility of silver, especially uh, compared to gold. But gold, as we've seen this year, has been volatile as well. So just uh, as a little word of caution out there, whenever you make a purchase or plan for purchases, you know, with the hope of where things could be with these metals, um, in the end, you hold them for the long term. That long term holding is where it's really going to pay off. And what does paying off mean? And with something like uh, something that I don't see as an investment, it means it preserves your wealth. You're not going to make money on physical gold and silver. Um, in fact, if you're not smart, you can lose a lot of money on physical gold and silver. So you have to keep in mind and uh, um, hold it for the long term, in my view.